some of the rhetoric that was used by RPOA as well as your office in terms of what city council was looking to do really put the community in a killer mind state and locked me in as their target. I was literally in the middle trying to bring everybody closer to the middle. And that's not what they saw because that's not what they heard from their chief. They heard from their chief that Dimless was trying to get rid of 35 officers, not listening to anything that she had to say and trying to cripple her from being a successful police chief, especially with her being our first Afro-Latina police chief. Actually, my relationship with a lot of community members are over. Um, I don't even know if I have a future in this city anymore. So I want to first start by apologizing for if my actions contributed to the, the loss of trust that you had with the, with the community. Um, so I'm sorry for that. I appreciate that. Um, from my perspective, you know, hearing you now and, and hearing you say, you know, the chief, and I'm thinking, did I ever say dimless? And I did not. You did not. But I always talked about counsel, and I tried to do that in terms of um, not singling mm -hmm. any person out, right. but I see how that could have been detrimental to you, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, well, Dimless is trying to, you know, weigh both sides and, and, and come to some middle ground, which mm -hmm. I did appreciate the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, you weren't trying to defund me by 10 million, <laughs> you know, but yeah. you, you did feel like there should be some money coming from the police department mm -hmm. to support these other measures. But also from my perspective, I was trying to save my department and, and, and that's the part I and understood. the resources. That's why I never badmouth you in public because I, I knew what you were trying to do. Yeah. How have my actions during the budget cut proposal hurt you in ways I may not fully be aware of? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that's a question. <laughs> that's probably the hardest question of the day so far. <laughs> that is a question. I didn't feel as though there was the slightest bit of understanding in terms of the position that I was in, in terms of trying to bring two polar opposite communities together. Oh, yeah. You're trying to save a department, I'm trying to save a city. Well, I, I mean, I have the community <laughs> right, no, yeah, too, I, because I, I'm, <laughs> I frankly have been very concerned about my ability to succeed mm -hmm. as the chief with this reduced and continued reduced because it wasn't just reduced this year my budget but last right. year too and so I'm like you know I all these people are counting on me am I going to be able to keep people safe in our community with half the resources that right. you know right which a is a previous that's a problem that we both share right so so that's 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 what I'm getting at like your problems are my problems right. then also I have else in, in looking at the totality of the city and a lot of the rhetoric that was that was shared on both sides. I don't mean to sound like Donald Trump, but it, it was it, it was both sides. It just made it so difficult. And for I'm just going to speak specifically to the black community because that is my base, that is my heart, that is the reason why I got in this. When they see our African American chief with stars and bars saying these things about the council. They're not, they're not, their immediate thought doesn't go to, to my colleagues. Their immediate thought goes to the guy who they gave money to, the guy who sat in their church, in their homes, and then knocked on their doors and, and had these conversations with. And so, I, I, like I said, I overstand. You were trying to protect your department. You were trying to make sure that you can do your job to the utmost. Um, shit, we black. <laughs> so, like, like people look for us to mess up in our job. Mm -hmm. With something that I don't fully understand about the position that you've recently been in, and why do you think I don't? That's a good follow-up question. <laughs> That's a good follow-up question. Um, I would say, because it says fully understand, I, I think that you understand some of the dynamics that I'm facing internally because of the conversations that you've had with, with Sergeant Thomas before his passing and, and others. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th I don't think that you understand the full 
dynamics of it. Mm -hmm. And um, right. Um, I don't think I can. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm yeah. just gonna be 100% honest. Mm -hmm. Like even when even as he was explaining it to me, it was just like. Yeah. And <laughs> if you look back, the the two previous African American chiefs that we've had did not leave on their own terms. Right. Right. And so I'm constantly have that in the back of my mm -hmm. head too. I mean, I want to leave Richmond yeah. on my own terms. Yeah. I want a retirement party and <laughs> right. hey, you know, right. I did All my the bells time. And whistles. And, yes, right, indeed. I want to leave on my own terms. Mm -hmm. And and then the other thing is, I have a family to support. Right. I have a family to, mm -hmm. you know, take care of. And and um, so things are difficult all the time. Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. If you could go back to the first round of budget proposals, what advice would you give yourself regarding the vote to the vote to come? Try, but don't be upset. Don't be upset like you were <laughs> that they didn't meet you in the middle. Don't get upset when they when it doesn't happen, but still try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that didn't go my way in, in this. Um, but I'm always committed to come back to the table because um, we have a job to do despite, <laughs> despite it. I think what I, I feel, felt throughout this budget cycle, and it was residual feelings from the last budget cycle, is that I, as the police chief, as the subject matter expert, was never asked mm -hmm. in the time, mm -hmm. you know, how is this gonna impact the community? I think our, our shared you know, concern is public safety for the community. Yeah. So, I don't know, I just, the, the taking action that's gonna significantly impact the police department mm -hmm. without asking me what that impact mm -hmm. is, even if you're still gonna do it, at least you know, right. just get all the information, mm -hmm. what, what you know, how it's gonna impact, you know, and I, and, my thing. And I would like to apologize if I didn't take the time to use my privilege as a council member to bring you in in those conversations in a, in a greater capacity to really explain and get, and get what you needed, people to understand, to understand. So I, I do apologize for that. And I do apologize for, make, for not making sure that you had as much time as other people had in, in explaining why they wanted to do what they wanted to do. So I, I sincerely apologize for that. Thank you. Yes, indeed. What have I done that has inspired you? I'm sorry, so, I, I just gotta say, that's a, for me, that's weird asking because I don't see myself as an inspiration. <laughs> oh my gosh, come on, Demolis. I mean, you ran for, I mean, you were nowhere on scene in terms of people knowing you. Yeah. And you all of a sudden decided to run for city council and got the most votes? Like, if that's not inspiring, <laughs> that's that's showing that you put boots to the ground, yeah. like we say, <laughs> and you got people to believe in you, and they and they do believe in you, and you've been, you know, doing what you said you're going to do once uh, you got elected. So thank you. That's very inspirational, yeah. and it's especially inspirational for these young people that, you know, think that politicians are 40, 50 year olds, <laughs> and then you look at you and like, oh, okay, I can do that. Look at you did that. <laughs> I just came out of nowhere. I mean, I knew you, but yeah. you came out for a lot of people. You just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So. so what do you think drives me? Love. Love for your family. Love for the people of Richmond. Love for Richmond. I really do feel like love drives you. Like I like when I see you out on the beat or when I see you with your family, it's, it's you look happy, even you know, even with all of the things going around. It's like I really do feel as though like love is one of those things that really drives you. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a cancer, so okay. family and love and just, just, yeah. What about me? <laughs> what drives yeah, you? What do you think drives me? I think your love for the community <laughs> and your service to the community and your love for black people yeah. <laughs> and wanting to do something different and, and you know. I'm a Scorpio, um, we love all. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. passionate people. <laughs> yeah. What have you learned from me? What, have I, what I learned from you is, in spite of it all, remain poised. I've never seen you yell. I've never seen you upset. 
I've never seen you let any line of questioning that any person from any side ask you throw you off your square. That's, that's what I admire the most, is, is your ability to not only look like you keeping it together, but to actually keep it together. Yeah. What I've learned, though, is that, uh, especially in my profession and, and working with, you know, mostly males and, and people that want to see you off your game, mm -hmm. that um, I learned very early that I couldn't let them see me sweat because mm -hmm. if they knew how to get to me, mm -hmm. then they'll keep antagonizing mm -hmm. and getting to me. So I, I learned early on to try to, you know, mask that, that um, emotion. Not all of it, because I do show right. emotion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but... I, I try not to let them see me sweat. I'll say you got to fight that emotional woman stereotype, especially, mm -hmm. who. <sighs> yeah. that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even if you sat here and explained to me everything that you were going through in, in your position, some things I just wouldn't be able to understand. So, like, I, I once again, appreciate you <laughs> in, in what you do. I still have a lot of love and respect, not only for your position, but for you as an individual. I appreciate that. Thank of course. you. Of course.